Good afternoon, one and all. Let me explain about today's topic. Before that, students, have you seen whenever these people, they're having a lot of importance. You see, first one, a well-known cricketer Mahindra Singh Dhoni and second person, world fastest runner Usain Bolt. And third picture you can see, a famous gymnast Deepa Karmakar. A fourth one, Indian Michael Jackson Prabhudeva. Why I am showing these pictures? You listen, Mahindra Singh Dhoni is hitting a sixer into gallery just by standing himself. And Hussein Bolt, after completing his running, he is giving a movement. He is celebrating that. And Deepa Karmakar giving a flexible gymnast. And you see a wonderful dance step by Indian Michael Jackson Prabhudeva. Why I am showing these all pictures here? Our body, uh, of course, these all people body, is maintaining that coordination with the help of a special system. That is called nervous system. Yeah, exactly. Today we are going to discuss about nervous system. nervous system. Just now I said, our body is controlled by a special system which is called nervous system. Not only nervous system, our body is also controlled by another system, endocrine gland system. Now, you observe nervous system which is passing information among the body parts. Nervous system is made up of by three components. They are brain, spinal cord, nerves. These three components are situated in nervous system. Nervous system is passing information with the help of these all parts. Stimulus to response. You can observe five sense organs here. How these five sense organs are working? Eyes for looking, ears for listening, nose for smelling, tongue for taste, skin to touch. Each and every organ is having a specific function. In our body, these all sense organs are getting information from outside. That's what we are calling them entrance gate of the knowledge. So stimulus means what? Change which occurs outside of the body. According to that change, what the response is coming out from the brain, which is called response. You can see this image, what is happening here. Mosquito is biting a person through sensory neuron, that information is going to the brain. Brain analyzes that information and sends to the effector organ hand through the motor nerve. So this hand is called effector organ immediately kills that mosquito which is biting us. So this is stimulus to response. Stimulus, the change occurs outside of our body. So according to that change, what we are giving response, of course from the brain it is coming, we call that response. Different nerve pathways, 
now cell is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system now cell is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system you you observe here i'm drawing this picture This is a nucleus. You can see red dot like structure I am showing here. That is very clear. Nucleus. Now I am drawing dendrites. These are dendrites. These are dendrites. You can see this is a long tube like structure. And dot like structures you can see here. You observe here. Now, one by one, write what is that particular part? These are called. Dendrites, dendrites. This is nucleus, nucleus. Myelin sheath, knots of Ranvia. Now terminals. Now, terminals. This long tube like structure is called axon. Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. These are nissel granules. Nissel granules. Nissel granules. Now, cell, which is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system. Now, cell is showing different parts. You can observe from first onwards cytoplasm, which is a fluid like substance that is having dot like structures. We have to call them nissel granules. The dendrites, you can see around uh, from the cell body projections are arising we have to call them dendrites this is what cell body cell body cell body and next you can observe a red dot like structure is called nucleus nucleus which is a brain of the cell next myelin sheath myelin sheath is protecting axon axon which is a long projection arising from cell body and now among the myelin sheath little gaps are there knots of ronvia next nerve terminals nerve terminals are involving to connect with another another nerve cell while passing information when the information is passing from one nerve cell to another nerve cell that passes through dendrites so, this is not a physical contract, thus a protoplasmic connection. Through these connection, information will pass from one nerve cell to another nerve cell that is called synapse. And one more interesting thing about nerve cell, 
now cell which is a longest cell in human body approximately nerve cell is 90 centimeters to 100 centimeters approximate length of nerve cell and you can also see in nervous system and before that here one flow chart is there you can observe brain at spinal cord also efferent nerves afferent nerves and muscles of the organ two type of nerves are playing very important role but even you see third type of nerves also we call them association nerves two type of nerves are sensory nerves also called afferent nerves, motor nerves also called efferent nerves. Afferent nerves are passing information from way from sense organs to brain or spinal cord, but efferent nerves or motor nerves are passing information to affect our organs. Association nerves are functioning in two ways as sensory and motor. So, that is what three type of nerves we can see here. So, afferent nerves, efferent nerves, already I said also called incoming nerves, efferent nerves also called outgoing nerves. You see uh, the best example, efferent nerves are having very special, they are responsible to give movements of the body. That is what if any case different nerves are damaged or afferent nerves are damaged anyway we do not regenerate again easily but still work is going but they do not regenerate again efferent nerves generally passes information to muscles efferent nerves damage that leads to different kind of diseases in some diseases we can observe efferent nerves will be damaged such diseases are polio, paralysis, even the great person scientist Stephen Hawking also suffered with this problem only that particular disease. <coughs> Amyotropic lateral sclerosis which is a disease Stephen Hawking was suffered. Nervous system if you see like a flow chart there are two type of major nervous systems central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system again divided into brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system divided into sensory division, motor division, sensory nerves and motor nerves. Motor division again divided into two types, autonomic nervous system, somatic nervous system. Autonomic deals about involuntary which are not under our control. Voluntary in the sense of course that is in our control it is also called somatic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system involuntary again divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. And before going to next slide uh, I want to tell how five sense organs are showing that activity. <coughs> before that you can observe this picture now I will do that uh, how sense organs are passing information to our brain. For example, children this is a bunch of uh, flowers red in color. How it is, how I am saying that, how it is possible for me, this is red in color, simple thing. Here my sense organ eye is working, sense receptor eye receptors are passing that information after capturing to sensory neurons, from sensory neurons to spinal cord, from spinal cord to brain, again from brain to back, spinal cord, from spinal cord to motor nerves, motor nerves to affect our organs. That is what I am saying, what a beautiful, what a beautiful red color rose. And one more thing, how? ears are working. How ears are working? I am giving a snapping clap nearby my ear. Are you listening? 
yeah this is a sound i am listening how this is passing through ear through this ears next ear receptors after that sensory neuron spinal cord brain again it comes back from brain to spinal cord motor neurons affected organ that's what i am telling this is a snapping club and next this is a spray bottle i am spraying here i am getting very thick smell it's a concentrated it is concentrated how i am saying this is concentrated very simple technique when i am spraying that from here it spreads to different corners you can also see diffusion process is involved here by that i am getting that smell and you know same pathway is involving but here nose what is that nose is involving and next one here lemon juice is there i am sipping little uh, lemon juice it's very sore how i'm saying it is sore very simple my tongue is functioning tongue receptors are passing to sensory neuron sensory neuron to spinal cord spinal cord to brain again it comes back from brain to spinal cord spinal cord to motor neurons then affected organs i'm saying it is very sore and the next one here a little pain is there that pain i'm pricking with that I am pricking with this pen. I am pricking my skin. Oh, what is this sensation? Yeah, when I am pricking with pen, the information is passing to the brain through sensory receptors. What? Skin, skin receptors, sensory neuron, spinal cord, brain, brain to of course reverse spinal cord spinal cord to motor neurons so finally i am showing action freaking action yeah how a little bit pain a little bit pain i am getting that is very simple these five sense organs are very simple children now very interesting in our body brain first you can see children <coughs> brain you watch this picture structure forebrain midbrain hindbrain forebrain midbrain hindbrain these are three parts of the brain in forebrain you can see cerebrum and diencephalon diencephalon next midbrain you can see in middle hindbrain also you can you can see back side here cerebellum and medulla oblongata forebrain midbrain hindbrain forebrain having two parts one is a cerebrum second one is diencephalon and next one midbrain you can see it is located in middle and after that hindbrain is having two parts one is cerebellum of course medulla oblongata pans feroli also comes under cerebellum uh, sorry uh, what is that hindbrain pans feroli also comes under hindbrain and floor of the brain you can see two glands are one is pituitary gland the second type of gland is hypothalamus gland one is pituitary gland second type of gland is hypothalamus gland now to make understand brain simple activity i'll show no need to go anywhere we people are only best tlm teaching learning middle how you see one of uh, my friend is coming to show that one just you watch here put like it two hands together yeah children can you believe it is brain of course you may not believe to understand brain structure very clearly no need to go anywhere just you understand what i am saying so this is brain i said how you can see what first of all brain has divided into three parts fore brain mid brain hind brain what you are seeing outside first of all these two hands are called fore brain 
this is totally forebrain forebrain even back side also you can see this is what forebrain so two 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 sides and forebrain you can see two parts one is cerebrum second one is diencephalon you see outside this is called cerebrum cerebrum which is made up of by several ridges and grooves these are ridges these are grooves between the fingers you can see grooves ridges grooves ridges grooves ridges ridges means elevations grooves means depressions elevations depressions elevations depression that is called gyri and sulci in singular gyrus and sulcus so this is gyrus this is sulcus gyrus sulcus brain completely you can see that largest part of the brain is cerebrum brain has a divided into three parts i said second one is mid brain mid brain you can't see because that is inside hind brain you can see here from back side and the next point you can see diencephalon also diencephalon also you cannot see that that is inside but what i said cerebrum cerebrum again divided into two parts rch lch rch lch right cerebral hemisphere left cerebral hemisphere this is what right cerebral hemisphere you can't see this side and this side left cerebral hemisphere these two are connected with a structure is called corpus callosum two are attached with a corpus callosum very interesting inside of the brain you can see a color white that is called white matter outside you can see gray color that is called gray matter because axons are located inside of the brain that's what that's what white matter cell bodies are located outside that's what gray matter now simple i'm separating two cerebral hemispheres i'm separating see inside what is the color white color now these two are attached by a structure is called corpus callosum it's very simple i said fore brain mid brain hind brain gyri sulci and even a long tube like structure which is attached to hind brain what is this what is this spinal cord this is what spinal cord so spinal cord is showing connection with hind brain so it's very simple uh, to understand about the brain structure i hope you understand <coughs> and next after this brain structure uh, a few things i want to say like a little rhyme for the children i hope you understand uh, these are <coughs> uh, you you can see this picture after this i want to tell the importance of importance of brain importance of brain <coughs> just like a rhyme for children i am saying you listen brain removes stress brain releases strain brain thinks logic brain thinks strategic brain makes you sharper brain makes you smarter brain makes you powerful brain makes you wonderful brain makes you powerful brain makes you wonderful this is uh, a rhyme for children about the importance of brain i i told that next you you see children uh brain is getting protection by a hard bony like structure which is called cranium in our local language we have to call that is skull and after that you can also observe one more thing brain is getting protection by triple layered structure which is called meninges what we have to call meninges meninges which is a triple layered structure meninges which is a triple layered structure <coughs> 
this triple eight structure made up of by three membranes the first one is jura matter second one is arachnoid matter third one is pia matter yeah okay children next come to that peripheral nervous system what is that peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system spinal cord which is playing a very important role in peripheral nervous system and before that what is spinal cord we have to know it's very simple if you observe ts of the spinal cord disc we can observe dorsal horn ventral horn with a sensory neuron and motor neuron at the same time inter neuron also dorsal horn which is passing which is passing information how with the help of neuron sensory neuron at the same time ventral horn showing connection with motor neuron that motor neuron is sending information to all the effector organs that is a speciality of motor neuron what is the role of spinal cord spinal cord involves in reflex actions what children reflex actions spinal cord involves in reflex actions so reflex actions are information will go up to spinal cord only information will not go up to up to brain in reflex action information passes up to spinal cord only so the best example if you see when i touch a hot object immediately i take my hand back because you know well what happens within fraction of seconds the action will be completed that is going up to spinal cord if it goes up to spinal cord that may takes extra time that may damages our health that's what reflex actions are saving us from some dangerous situation at the same time not only that one you can also observe some other uh, when irritants are entering into nose we may get coughing and sneezing that is also type of action we call reflex action and one more example when high amount of light penetrates into our eyes immediately without our conscious we flutter our eyes so fluttering of eyes due to that reflex action information is going up to spinal cord even while walking on the road if you keep your leg on sharp edge thing what happens immediately you take back your hand you you take back your leg because what information goes to spinal cord so spinal cord gives responses in reflex action that's what we control we save ourselves that is the role of spinal cord and two scientists are very famous you can listen charles bell charles bell and francis mesentai i am not writing completely listen charles bell and francis mesentai so these two scientists first time discovered the role of spinal cord what they said spinal cord having two horns one is dorsal horn second one is ventral horn dorsal horn is showing connection with connection with a neuron that is called sensory neuron ventral horn is a showing connection with motor neuron so these two neurons are in two horns that's what two horns two roots ventral root and dorsal root sir having two different functions this was said by these couple of scientists first time so we have to we have to appreciate the role of these couple of scientists <coughs> and the next one is you can see <coughs> i am going to tell about how the reflex arc is working how the reflex arc is working very simple you see that here when we are hitting with a hammer 
information is going through sensory neuron it is going up to spinal cord only you can see it is not going to the brain are you observing it is not going to brain from here again it is coming to the back what is that effector organ muscle so muscle is giving movements so this is you can see what is happening in reflex arc stimulus receptor of course here you can see skin cells are receptors sensory neuron this is sensory neuron interneuron this is interneuron motor neuron of course motor neuron effector muscle this is effector muscle what response is coming yeah movements of the leg you can absorb yeah just now i said charles bell and francis mason die these two people discovered the role of spinal cord with the help of two horns it is happening dorsal root and of course dorsal horn ventral root and ventral horn so spinal cord involving in reflex action that's very important autonomous nervous system sympathetic and parasympathetic before going to that about peripheral nervous system a simple activity i'll play that just now i told what i said we do not go any way to do experiments with low cost and no cost improvised material in our surroundings only you can see if you observe very closely this is spinal cord with brain i am saying can you believe this you have to believe you see how first of all you know this is a pen but i am saying this is brain and spinal cord how you remove this one first this is spinal cord i am showing a refill which is inside the pen this is called spinal cord bundle of nerve cells this is spinal cord having a fluid inside of it what is that cerebro spinal fluid which is giving protection to the spinal uh, from shocks and jerks this is called spinal cord inside csf cerebro spinal uh, sorry uh, cerebro spinal fluid and the next one you can see you are putting inside what is this backbone vertebral column which is giving protection to the spinal cord what i said vertebral column in the sense backbone backbone is different children vertebral column in the sense backbone spinal cord in the sense bundle of nerve cells that is giving protection you see it's very strong now what you people are observing you know needle of the pen what is this students this is brain brain then brain is not open brain is not outside no that is getting protection with a hard bony like structure which is called cranium this is cranium otherwise skull simple this is what spinal cord spinal cord with vertebral column at the same time brain that is getting protection with a refill it's a very simple in our surroundings many materials are there with the help of them we can do this kind of activities we get many things yeah next autonomous nervous system i said already two type of nervous systems very important what first one central nervous system composed by brain and spinal cord that one more nervous system peripheral nervous system having uh, nerves and even autonomous nervous system which is not a special nervous system that comes under uh, peripheral nervous system only you see two type of nervous system parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic sympathetic two nervous systems are taking responsibility about controlling of organs how you see one can increase the rate of metabolic activities one can decrease the rate of metabolic activities finally sympathetic parasympathetic making together balancing our metabolic activities that's what we people are maintaining we people are doing adjusting these metabolic activities for example you see in front of you a lion is there for example how you feel your bp will rise blood pressure will rise respiration rate will increase so many kind of mouth will dry pupil of the eye size eyes uh, diameter of the pupil will be increased this all are by your sympathetic system only sympathetic with feel you can show that one parasympathetic 
when you are in relaxation mode, that's what you see. If there is no tiger, how you feel, everything will be in the normal state. Everything decreases. That's what quite they're working opposite, but they're maintaining balance. Our metabolic activities equilibrium, they are taking responsibility. That's what sympathetic would feel. Parasympathetic, of course, are quite opposite to the sympathetic. So active mode and relaxive mode you can compare between these two type of systems. So sympathetic and parasympathetic. These all are the examples you can see. Here, sympathetic dilate pupil, inhibit salivation, accelerates heartbeat. Just now I told, dilate bronchi, inhibits digestion, stimulates glucose release, inhibit peristalsis and secretion, relaxes louder. If you see, these all metabolic activities are rising in the sense, of course, when we are with feel, this all the things will be happen. Next, you are in relaxive mode, then pupil automatically will be constricted, stimulates the salivation, slows heartbeat, constrict bronchi, you can you can compare with that diagram beside of that writing you can beside of the statement you can see picture you may get idea constrict bronchi stimulates digestion stimulates bile release stimulates peristalsis and secretion contracts bladder it's very simple you can see sympathetic in active mode parasympathetic in relaxing mode yeah summary now cell is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. I told it very clearly before this lesson, which is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system. And the human nervous system is studied under two divisions, two major divisions. One is the central nervous system, second one is peripheral nervous system. Even autonomous nervous system is there, but that comes under peripheral nervous system only. Next, reflex, reflexes are fast, immediate, automatic and involuntary responses of the body. Reflexes in the sense, reflex actions, information which goes up to spinal cord. We have to call them reflex actions. How it would be? Very fast, immediate, automatic and involuntary responses means not under our control. Here two type of responses, two type of actions will go in our body. What? Voluntary actions, involuntary actions. Voluntary actions means which are under our control, we call them voluntary actions. Involuntary actions are which are not under our control, we call them involuntary action. So reflex actions all are involuntary actions. So, that should be compulsory student. If there are no reflex actions, how? We do not save from harmful, dangerous situation. You can understand one more example. In our houses also, if you get, in, if you get an electric shock, within fraction of seconds, you take back your finger. You may not get what is happening there. Simple thing. What is that? Spinal cord is functioning there within fraction of seconds. You don't know what is happening there, immediately you are taking back your fingers. Otherwise, we get a lot of damage that leads to sometimes death of the people also. So, reflex actions are must, should be done in our body. And next, the autonomous nervous system has two parts. One is sympathetic and parasympathetic, which cause physical reactions opposite to each other. Yeah, just now I said, one can increase, one can decrease. One in relaxive, one is in active mode, whatever it is the thing, but two things, sympathetic and parasympathetic, two are taking responsibility about, about making balancing of our metabolic activities. If there are no two systems, we may get a lot of damage. So, two things should be done according to the situation. So, that is the importance of sympathetic system and parasympathetic system. Children, uh, about this lesson, uh, we have to recall some questions. What, which is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system? If you get a question, what is your answer? Now cell. Now cell is also called neuron. Another question you may get, which is a longest cell 
in the human body. What is that? Again, a nerve cell. Which components are there in nervous system? Brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So, how many type of nerves we can see in our body? Mainly two types, sensory and motor. But even third type of nerves also we can observe. What children? Yeah, we can call them association nerves. In which diseases? Which diseases are responsible for damaging of motor nerves? In which disease motor nerves will be damaged? Polio, paralysis, these are uh, mainly we can see. And also you can see which organ will be involved in reflex actions. Simple answer. What is that? Spinal cord. Project work, you can see what is meant by cadaver transplantation. How does the G1 Dan organization help in saving lives of people? Make a report on it. Organ donation is very important, children. So, from brain dead people, if we donate organs to others, uh, other persons, we call that is cadaver transplantation. So, apart from that, government is Jeevandan scheme proposed, organization proposed, that is taking the responsibility of it and write about involuntary actions which are controlled by spinal cord. Involuntary actions already I given some examples. You can also think and frame some other questions. Transform yourself, benefits of meditation. Today's a social awareness slide is. If you go through meditation, you get many benefits. Reduces your anxiety. You may get health of the heart and better sleep. Improves your happiness and better brain. Reduce pain. Children, uh, try to understand. Uh, this is my last class about our body. Due to that, I want to revise uh, once what happened in past two lessons. Due to some disturbances, uh, due to some inconveniences, uh, uh, little things were happened. I hope you understand. I am showing once again them. Children, I hope you understood. This is last slide, one more from third lesson. You see, due to the importance of circulation, one second I am telling. Iota, first of all, just you imagine this is heart. This is right auricle, right ventricle, left auricle, left ventricle. Right auricle is getting deoxygenated blood from pulmonary artery. Uh, you can see that uh, deoxygenated blood which is getting 
from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava opening into right auricle, right auricle to right ventricle, right ventricle to lungs through right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery and it makes oxygenated, that oxygenated blood comes to the left auricle through these are left pulmonary veins and right pulmonary veins you can see. So, it is very important need not to be changed it is pulmonary vein only left pulmonary veins and right pulmonary veins students note this point open into left auricle, left auricle to left ventricle and left ventricle to through a big blood vessel iota it supplies to all other organs. So, then it becomes deoxygenated after utilizing body parts again it comes to right auricle from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. So, it is happening in cyclic process. So, that is what children note this point blood vessels arteries always transport oxygenated blood except except pulmonary artery veins always transports deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein. So, this is very important topic that is what I repeated once again and the project work once again you have to note children what I given for these three classes. First one how does coronavirus affect the respiratory system? Second question why pranayama is called the art of breathing? And third question preparation and article on royal disease hemophilia and heart attack third question very important fourth make a model of stethoscope with suitable material show your creativity by it fifth one what is meant by cadaver transplantation how does z1 dan organization help in saving lives of people make a report on it this is today's question and you can notice the sixth question write about involuntary actions which are controlled by spinal cord this is about project work not only today's three classes project works are given very clearly and every class we given a social awareness slide. I hope you received that once again I am repeating that the first slide first class slide what I what is that smoking is injurious to health please note that one and the second one donate your blood and save lives this is second and third one meditation makes you perfect. This is about today's class children. Thank you. I hope you understood. I hope you received.